Welcome to week five. Welcome. We're here at my old place, the old stomping ground. <laughs> and it's basics week. So if you're just starting out or just beginning this kind of training, we're gonna be showing you a lot of exercises along the way that's gonna make it more accessible for you. There's an epic ice bath coming up at the end of this very session, which we're really excited about. I think we're gonna hit sub 10. We're definitely gonna be doing sub 10. We've got ring sequences. I still can't do the ring sequences. It is a bit too intense on that forearm. So I'll be starting off with mobility and then doing some exercises more geared specifically towards my goals. Let's get into it. <laughs> mobility 101. This is a sequence, side split sequence I'm doing for the side split. It starts, it's the one you saw last week, but it's been modified a little bit. Let's start things off with the Cossack squat. Main critique is before I was turning the leg out, which is gonna put it more onto my hamstrings. It more replicates the pancake stretch. What I wanna do is keep my foot in the same position as you would in the side split, so the adductor remains engaged the entire movement. It does take away a little bit of depth, but it's much more appropriate for the muscle. If you as well are doing it by turning the foot out, when you start doing this, you won't feel like you're getting as much range of motion. It will feel a little bit different, perhaps, you perceive that difference as it feels wrong, but just stick to it. I'm definitely getting a lot more out of the adductor, out of the appropriate muscles doing it like this. Trying to keep my chest up. Beginners can do this as well. There's no, not really a prerequisite for the Cossack squat. It's just your range of motion. You don't want to push it too far. Just go with where it feels almost uncomfortable. Feel that stretch, feel the muscle engage. That's ideal. Then we jump straight to horse stance. For beginners, just don't take it out as far as I am. I'm trying to push it that a little bit further today. One, two, three, four, four and a half. That's usually where I'd stop. Going that little bit further. really uncomfortable in the hips. I haven't seen tremors like that since Mount St. Helens blew its top. Yeah! And then we finish it off with the side split. Same deal for a beginner, you just go to where your limit is. Shout out to Jordan Garcia again. I'm quite sure I mentioned, if I didn't, I was thinking of adding weight for the middle split. I consulted with Garcia. He said it's, doesn't really, it's not really appropriate unless you can do the side split, which makes perfect sense. Feeling quite difficult today, well, quite tight. But I am making progress with this because I let my arms hang and where my fingers touch, I can feel I'm getting closer and closer to the ground as the weeks go by. Ugh, just a 30 second stretch for that strengthening the adductors in the exact position rather than putting specific focus on them like horse stance and Cossack squat same thing that you saw in the last workout of the last episode still keeping it relatively the same for the right arm I just took my thumb away so I was hanging like that with my left that added a little bit more a little bit less assistance sorry and then for the left pretty much just regular pull-ups I'm still doing the greasing the groove type method trying to do it often uh, each consecutive day for a beginner if you're doing this kind of exercise if your goal is for a one-arm 
pull or one arm chin. You obviously would do it very similar to what I'm doing. I'm pretty much at that beginner level. You want to do a pull up and just have not as much weight on the arm that you're aiming to get the one arm pull up on. Talking about progressions for a beginner for planche negatives, it really is just practicing lowering from your handstand down through a basic planche progression like tuck planche. And if you're not yet at that stage where you can hold a handstand, you really need to work on getting that handstand first. The interesting thing about that exercise is you actually have to go through the movement and it's up to your partner to give, have the resistance, have an even distribution. Another way of saying that is for the spotter to make sure they vary the resistance. Doing Cuban press again, I found it harder. So I'm like, that's pretty much why it's harder. So I'm gonna do that instead of just the rotations. did accidentally. The Olympic lifter came out. For a beginner, just don't use as much weight. If a barbell's too heavy, I'm sure you'll find a barbell that's heavy enough. You could use a stick at worst case scenario, you could use these half kilo weights. It's not gonna be it's not gonna trap you into the best position because they're just weight plates, but if that's all you've got, you can use that as well. We're drawing sword again, I'm just gonna make it a little bit more difficult. Let's see how we feel with a bit more difficulty in targeting that rotator cuff. Oh yeah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> feel the burn, it's still pretty easy, but I feel the burn a lot more compared to last, uh, last week's. I'm gonna give it another chance. We'll increase the difficulty this week for the drawing sword and hopefully it will achieve some better results. But I'm keeping it. Da! Da! We finished the workout. It wasn't that intense for me today, which is gonna make this that much worse. The night's now fallen and it's getting a lot colder. But you know what it is. It's Tuesdays, it's ice bath day. Yes! Because we're here, I, there is a bathtub here, but we wanna try and get more out of our ice bath. And we think that can be achieved by hopping in my bin. This will fit our body. It will be a little bit cramped, but it should fit the whole body. We want to fill it up with water. And I just went and got three bags of ice that I'm ready to one and a half each. Dump in here for my ice bath. Dump the other one and a half in there for Lachlan's ice bath. And we're going to be able to immerse our entire body inside. So it's going to help for recovery to the bits that don't get the, that aren't iced, bathed in the bathtub at Lachlan's place. So we think this will be really ideal in that sense. We're also not using the packs, we've actually got the ice. So we're thinking that's going to make it a lot colder as well. So here is the bin. As you can see, I'm a fair bit taller than it, so I'll be... Oh, this is going to be really uncomfortable. I'll be down here like this. Hey! <laughs> Ten minutes. Uh, we've taken all the trash out. We've just left that on the side there for, for hilarious reasons. 
And I'm gonna start filling up the bath now. So how are we actually gonna fit in there, mate? Can you show us before we fill it up with water? I think the interesting part will be getting out because we'll be so tight and not want to move and we've got to hop all the way out. That's a bit wobbly right now but that'll be fixed when the when it's got a lot of that water in there. So this will be horrible when we get in. We'll be like, oh my dick's shrunk. <laughs> and then we still got to lower what, half our body in. Oh, <laughs> this is gonna be terrible. I'm so uncomfortable yeah, right now. Shot. Oh, that works. Oh, yeah, I guess that kind of works. We just won't fill it up all the way. <laughs> I feel alone. We've figured out how to sit in here. Oh, but. No! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well... I'm really not... I've reverted. I'm not looking forward to the ice bath again. Here I am. The ice bath is ready. Oh, we've... We managed to get it to 8 degrees. I'm not sure if it's going to warm up. Alright, I just want to get this over with. I feel like one of the worst parts is going to be my feet. I don't want to! <laughs> Help! <laughs> well, I'm all the way in. I can we get a bit more water in there. Mum, I'm completely in lock and please. I'm actually fitting in a lot better than I thought. I've just slotted in. You don't even, you need not even ventilate. Correct? Yeah, it's pretty cold, definitely, but I think the ice baths we've done have kind of prepared my body a little bit for it. This is definitely colder than the ice baths at Lachlan's. I can feel the difference between eight degrees and 11. Yeah, it's about nine degrees now. Nine degrees, I feel like I'll warm it up pretty quickly as well. <laughs> I can see a film developing on the top of the water. Yeah, what is that? Bin dirt. Telltale of the um the grease and grime in here. <laughs> <laughs> so ten minutes is up. Twelve minutes actually. You wanna help me out there, mate? We'll see how we go. I just feel like my muscles have <laughs> no strength to lift me up. I thought the ice bath in the bin was great. <laughs> I much preferred that, to be honest, over the bath because I feel like my muscles are getting, more of my muscles are getting exposed. Look at my muscles, my muscles, my muscles. Look at my muscles, my muscles. Look at my muscles, my muscles, my muscles. In the lost river! <laughs> oh, he's done it himself. I'm curious to see how cold the water is now. He's done it himself, everyone! And that's the ice bath in the bin. I'd look forward to doing that again, to be honest. One thing I really liked was it got the whole body, which we're doing a lot of upper body body weight training, but things like Jefferson curls and the side splits, it's really nice to be able to ice this part, the lower part as efficiently as the upper body particularly when I'm doing weights training as well for my legs, squats and Olympic lifting. This is really beneficial. So I'd recommend a bin over a bath. I'd recommend cleaning the bin first. We didn't get it on camera, but there was a lot of just yuck goop in there. So make sure you clean that out because if you have any open wounds or for your excretory organs, it's just not nice. To, be bathing in trash. For an ice bath, if we're talking beginner, I mean, you could say just do it, mate. Just, yeah. You won't like it, but just do it. But if you do want some kind of prerequisite, have a cold shower after training and build up to it that way.
welcome to the second session of the week. Starting it off, this second session with our planche circuit. I can still feel that I'm putting a bit more emphasis on that right arm, but overall I think that was an improved amount of lean per rep compared to last week. Got our tuck planche shootout to straddle planche we're doing. I'm still going to keep it not as intense as straddle, going to frog planche again. Straight, straight, so good. And I'm just doing him in a, in a tough position. Now, mate. messing around with support right now in place of what would have been the half lever to straddle planche. I feel like it's getting a pump specifically in that area. Incorporating this every now and then is just helping to repair the injury so that I can get back to training at my optimal strength level quicker. Drives feeling strangely rewarding today. I was hesitant to do that exercise because that one aggravates my forearm because it's a jolt and we had the opportunity to do it on quite hard floor today as well. So I felt like my brain was going... <laughs> You got your arms up, everyone. I feel like the arms were okay, but I was completely closed in the hips, and I feel like that's a really important part also of the, the exercise. Legs legs were open. Open. But I feel like you kind of have to have balance, so I don't know. I don't think you could keep your legs tight. So the annoying thing was when you try and open your hips, you lose balance and you can't get a full range with your arms. Even when you feel like you're doing it right, it feels wrong because it's such a weird exercise. And I was trying not to laugh during the set because every time I went around, my legs were violently swerving Lachlan. <laughs> and it looked like he was losing control of me as we went down, went down the aisle. That'll take a bit to get used to and for me to really be able to tell you what I think you best get out of the exercise. So once you nail this one, you're really, it's crucial to get in the planche. Yes! This one 
takes a little bit of back and forth between your partner to work out what they need to do. Do they need to pull your legs a bit more so you can open your hips as well as get that dip? If they're not pulling back enough, you're not able to open your hips and you end up doing a Victorian lean into it. So if you're doing this one with your training partner, just make sure you're very, you communicate what needs to be done to get the appropriate form. Because it takes a little bit of trial and error at first. Yep, that was much better. fleshing this one out but I feel it's really beneficial to building up for impossible dip because it is the impossible dip just with assistance. With the thickest TheraBand there is. Oh, promising. Ideally I would get access to this kind of thing more often so I can train it like this. But if I cannot, when I do, it's a really good gauge for how much I'm progressing with this exercise. Lachlan already said that one scene was good at the start. And I remember struggling with most of them last time I did it. plate so that it's adding more weight to the exercise because it's getting quite easy now just having Lachlan putting his putting the pressure down on my core there needs to be something more there so I can adapt again so putting our elbows further forward will be a good way to increase difficulty given I'm already very comfortably supporting his body weight Last time I did this with Carson, which was on the weekend, so about four days ago, he would hit fail on full body weight. Now you can hold it. But that felt particularly strong. I think the one thing that clicked was engage your glutes in this exercise. The glute activation is really important for any core exercise. To have it tight. It's obviously it's part of your, part of your core and your trunk, so you really have to have that tight, along with everything else, to be strong in the position. Yeah, but it's interesting. It's a lot, a lot of the time you forget about that and I need to be reminded about it. Good point. Your reminder. Finishing off this workout with a bit of a double over. This is the, we're putting the exercise ball between our legs, lifting up. The only difference is we're holding for three seconds. It just so happens that the plant circuit and the trunk strength fall on the same, same day for us. I think it's beneficial to still do both because one of them has you just doing it for reps the other one is the hold. So look at it as that final exercise for the workout that really just drives home, activating the abs, activating the core. That's it for the workout today. 
given that it's week five, we're say halfway through this week, is there anything you've noticed that's particularly improved since day one? Day dot? Ugh. Definitely the side, side plank. Heaps stronger today. Significant gain even from the last time we did it. I put my whole body weight on Tyson and he was handling it. So that was awesome to see. Tyson's a possible dip. With the support, was looking much stronger today than I've seen before. Good technique on those first three. Last two were a bit, bit of failing in there, but the first three were looking really strong. So that's also definitely improving. And then when you went and prepared the trunk strength, I did another set, the last one, and that felt really good as well. I think really? I did four reps. Oh. You weren't there, wow. but it, it happened. Yeah, oh, I guess. <laughs> I've only done that exercise once before, so the improvements are directly from the other exercises you've seen me doing, the impossible push-up with the weight plate on me, as well as the negatives and the supersets. Planche-wise, I can't tell if he's getting stronger or not. I'm sure he is, but obviously because of the forearm and holding back, I haven't been able to see you at your best. Yeah. I'm sure that you are getting stronger. In it, so. The injury is getting better. Yeah, I'm having hydro away now. I just wanted to see if you guys had tried choc mint flavor. We were only able to get chocolate in Australia, chocolate and vanilla. So every time I have this chocolate, there's a sip of depression. <laughs> what? Uh, it tastes pretty good. I really wanted choc mint. So have you guys had it? Is it amazing, just like I think? Or is it Let me know. not good and we're lucky to have chocolate? I'm sure it would be good though, so. Yeah, I'm feeling quite good. Amazing, actually, after that ice bath, the bin bath that we had, as well as the new supplementation I've introduced. I'm just feeling really fresh and really strong at the moment. Awesome going into week five. Got the ice bath tonight. It won't be a bin bath, unfortunately. And then we're gonna head over to Olympic Park for session three. Spotted. That's getting much smoother as the weeks go by. The very important aspect of handstand push-ups is the stabilizers that are used. It's so important to adapt them in with the strength of just pushing through your delts. I would have fallen out at about probably the second rep for that one if it wasn't for Lachlan helping with balance, which just goes to show that Maintaining balance during a handstand push-up is really what is gonna give you those sets, those solid reps. If you wanna bring it back to a basic, I am doing quite a basic version of it, which is getting spotted throughout. So even if my balance fails, it gets corrected by my spotting partner so I can still, I can still dominate the strength element. Do it against a wall, but understand this will limit your range of motion. Generally, if you're doing freestanding handstand push-ups, you close the shoulder angle slightly so you can fit down in a deep, get a deeper range of motion. Other ways you can build up is doing a push-up and raising the height of your feet so it becomes more and more inverted. Lastly, get a handstand and then start working range of motion to get the handstand push-up. bit more adventurous now as the injury heals further incorporating those spotted planch negatives and pressing back up one thing you might have noticed as well which I certainly felt was my arms bent a bit as it got difficult and that was really hard for me to force them to go straight that's something I think will improve if I focus on locking the tricep on locking the elbow but really flexing the tricep beginner exercises for this kind of thing 
I mean, let's just talk we're training planche in general. Beginner exercise is a tuck planche. Get your handstand so you can start to train planche negatives because they are so beneficial. In regards to advice for beginners, you can take a page out of my book, take the swing out of it, and I'm just doing the dip and then leaning to planche. And obviously in terms of the planche, you can scale that to your level, whether it be tuck, the frog style tuck, straddle planche, etc. We're talking basics, pull-ups. What are some beginner variations? Negatives. If negatives are too difficult, you can start on rings or a bar and just be inclined towards it. So you're pulling up like that. Much like the handstand push-up, building up to it, you would just increase, increase the degree in which you're pulling so it gets greater and greater, to voila, you've done a pull up. Doing that isolated intense movement on that forearm, I can still feel it. That's why you saw me cut that off, that side off after three reps. I can get five with this arm. It's still quite intense though, so I do need the left arm. So then there's that balance of how much can this take without straining it to how strong is this arm without it being too intense. So I was pushing it a little bit at the start of the session. I'm feeling it flare up a bit in the forearm. So instead of pushing this negative, I've chosen to revert back to a simpler variation. Yeah, one of it. What I want Lachlan to do is to spot uh, lowering down through cross but squat a lot and it'll just help me feel where this injury is at. If you can't get a hold of cross trainers, what you do is you loop your hand through a ring strap, hold onto the ring and press that way. It's always best to get a spotter to help you with this and being this is advice for a beginner, definitely have a spotter and have them just spot enough to make it challenging for you but not so you're failing through each rep. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was not bad. I've now got puncture marks in my hips. How does it feel? Do you feel pressure? Does it feel normal? It's this arm, thank you. I'm just speaking generally here. <laughs> it feels, yeah, it feels good. How does it feel? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Perhaps it's also in my mind as well. I can see in the mirror even there's that. Really? It's not even. I'm holding back a little bit, but I feel like I'm stopping it that bit before I'll start to feel the pain. Which goes back to what I was saying before, I don't want to overexert it too soon. Just because I'm starting to do it, I don't want to think, oh, I can, I'm just ready again. You really got to know your own limits and you got to learn to listen to your body. We've got the pommel planche now. This is something that Niall specifically wrote down next to the exercise he'll explain in a Skype session. Seems relatively straightforward but we do find it odd, freakishly odd. Like that sock that looks like there's still someone standing in it. So what we're gonna do is just do it how we perceive it to be done. And that's it. <laughs> is that weird? He did say do full planche, but I'm not strong enough to do that right now, nor is my forearm ready to take it to that level. Beginner is pretty much what I was doing. You do tuck variations and have someone call out when you're level so that you can develop that muscle memory with a spotter or use a camera if you're on your own. It's really important to develop that muscle memory early 
so you don't train it going too low or too high and it takes effort to correct it further into the future. We're in the weights room now. Fortunately, we're in the same weights room. With something like a handstand negative, you can really do that anywhere. For something like weights, you can also do that anywhere, but we're using machines and it's good to use the same machine to track progress. As we've mentioned in the past, this one here, particularly for this exercise, uses weights one through to 16, rather than say you're doing 10 kilos, 15 kilos, 20 kilos. So it's good to be using the same machine to gauge progress, which leads me to saying, I'm using the number four. I used three last week. So if four feels okay, it really is textbook evidence that my injury is getting better and I'm getting stronger week by week. I'll also mention, just before we start the weight session, I'll be giving any pointers I have along the way, but in essence, doing these for a beginner is really just about doing a lighter weight. Feels a little bit vulnerable, but I got through it. Evidence doesn't lie. Good set on one of Lockton's warm ups. <laughs> was a PB though, uh, coming back into it, so I'm happy with that. Much like the Maltese, I'm moving up little by little every week. We have seated cable rows here, and I've dropped the weight compared to last week. I felt like I wasn't getting a full range of motion when I was doing it. I felt like I was pulling it to here and then struggling to keep it there for three seconds. Whereas the idea is to get it hit it with that complete contraction and stay activated for three seconds rather than weaken in the position. So I've dropped it down to 55 and I really want to smash that, smash the exercise with that mentality in mind. If I can do it, which I did for the first set and I've got a massive pump in my lats right now, they're thanking me for that, then I'll up it next week to 60 again. My chest is feeling good this week, so I've been able to go to 100. Inter-trunk work capacity. Yes. I just realized that's pretty easy. I'm just gonna hold each rep that little bit longer up the top when the bicep is in that full contraction. I did it for the last two reps because I just realized mid-set and already it felt 
like a significant difference in terms of how difficult it made each rep. Ooh, I've got ants in my pants. Yes! I really want to go heavier with this weight, but I can't just yet. It's eating at me. Quite easy. For this one, it's very appropriate to say that I'm as strong as my weakest link because that's not too difficult. Certainly could go heavier, but I need to I need to take it slow. So next week I think I'll up it to 10 kilos, a two kilo increase. Just about gradually bringing it back in. You go over and try and do your yoga with them. Hey, <laughs> so do you do yoga much or is it just something that you... That <sighs> wasn't me, I swear, That's, that was my back. Yeah, my back. My back's doing it. <sighs> Don't run away, it's just my back. Okay, that was me. forever. 
So I just want to take a minute to reflect on some of the amazing memories we've had, not just in Stronger, but in life in this apartment. to see where my strength is at for this. Wow. So that felt definitely better. I used to never be able to catch a negative. I'd fall in the bottom. Proof there that I've gotten better already with that. So now what I'll do is I'll attempt a positive in the perfect position and I'll get Lachlan to spot the feet. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> Looks like he'll need more than a hand. Yep. That was tough. Still really heavy. Yeah. It's like 40 kilos at least there. <laughs> Oh yeah. I think it's perhaps because I'm not able to completely commit to Niall's program because of my injury. I've focused more on direct exercises for impossible dip. I'm starting to get a little bit of soreness in the back here, just where I guess the tricep connects to the forearm. Um, like an overuse type injury, something you get when you're continually doing the same movement, same strain. So that's something to watch out for. Getting the full impossible dip in seven weeks seems like a pretty big ask at the moment. But I'm optimistic as long as I keep up the training, keep up the intensity and watch that overuse. I'm confident that it's gonna be possible dip. Yeah, imagine I got it and I was like, hashtag possible dip. Hashtag possible dip everyone. <laughs> just chasing a perfect handstand for some fun. In the past I've had a habit of, because I did so many tuck negatives for planche, when I actually did the handstand, my butt would be over my head. So it's fun to just play around with handstand to fix that up. Also, it's kind of like a light way for me to train for planche. Got quite a nice pump there. Uh, do you find playing around with handstand and just trying to that perfect form, you have to have everything really tight. Like every, yeah. everything my toes is tight. Are my toe cramp is yeah. you were yeah. fixing it up. So um, me. even doing the basics but with that really nice form, you get a pretty good comp, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because um, I've noticed just myself playing around with skills that are not that hard, but you just do it nice, like nice form, slow control. Even though it's not that challenging after you, it's just really satisfying, yeah. The 
side split training I've been doing is actually showing off during the straddle handstand. Lachlan thinks that it's, and it felt personally as well, a lot wider than usual. I could work a bit more on the compression aspect of that. When I actually come down and I'm in that support position doing straddle, that's actually the hardest part of the skill because I'm not very strong in that holding that position in support and that's where more compression work would benefit. And then we have the week five workout done. The, actually, the bit we didn't film at the end of this workout was freaking hectic. We were smashing it, covered in sweat. It was the trunk strength for me. Lachlan was able to smash up a limb as well. He was feeling really good. What we want to do is make sure that we get that on camera for next week. So tune in next week and we're going to be filming this session for upper limb and trunk strength and it is going to be mental. I hope this week you guys got a lot out of talking about the beginning, the beginner exercises for the exercises that we were doing. If there was anything that you were really waiting for us to explain but you didn't see it, please comment down below. Next week is our last week of training in Australia and then we're taking flight. The stronger boys are coming to the United States of America. Can you eat that? Eating. Yes, what else I is? I am from Kentucky. Yeah. It's going to be massive and it's gonna change the way this series is happening really. Things are gonna change for the better. It's gonna be so epic and we can't wait. So next week will be the preparation for that. And in general, I'll be stepping it up yet again as my injury gets better. Workouts will be getting more and more intense and getting closer to those goals. Tune in next week for week six because it's gonna be the most, the most massive week ever. Make sure you subscribe so you're getting these episodes delivered weekly right into your feed. Like the video if you enjoy what you see and I can't wait to see you for next week. My back's just so massive.